Have anybody come in? They were all at the other service because they were all singing. So that's all right. Okay. So, oh, Ember's coming. Thanks, Ember. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Okay. So question for you. Um, we, well, let me say something first, and then I have a question for you. Um, in today's gospel reading, Jesus is going to tell us that um, in order to be the greatest, we have to be the servant of all, okay? So we're supposed to serve other people, right? So if you are serving someone else, um, well, who serves you, first of all? Who helps you in your life? Your parents, right? Your teachers, yeah. Do you, is there anybody else that you serve? Yeah, your friends. Yeah, so here's the thing that's really cool about what God has, in, has planned for us in this whole thing. Because when you first hear it and you hear, be the servant to all, you think, well, what about me? Like, what happens for me if I'm the servant of all? Here's the cool thing that God has figured out, that Jesus figured out for us. If I'm serving other people and you're serving other people and everybody here is serving other people, we're all also going to be served, aren't we? Right? Now, it's not about, like, because this person served me, I'm supposed to serve them. It's not, like, transaction like that. But if I'm serving and you're serving and we're all serving, then we're all helping each other. And it's a mutual relationship. And that's why it's good for us to be servant to all. Because when we're thinking of others, they're also thinking of us. And everybody gets taken care of. Pretty cool, right? All right. So let's give thanks to God for this awesome gift that he's given to us. Dear God, we thank you so much for calling us to serve others. Help us to know that when we serve, we are also served by others. It's this part of your great plan. We thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to do so and help us to, um, help us to live thinking of others as we also take care of ourselves. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you saw, back in the 90s, the movie The American President with Michael Douglas? Some of you, maybe. Lots of people at the other service. I, I did. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, Michael Douglas is the president, and his character makes a speech towards the end of the movie um, at a press conference. And as part of this speech, he says, America isn't easy. America is advanced citizenship. You gotta want it bad. And then he proceeds to talk about all the crazy ways that citizenship is hard, like how you might have to listen to someone who is standing center stage advocating for something that you would spend your lifetime fighting against. So today, as I was thinking about all of the readings that we've been doing for the past six or seven weeks in Mark, kind of reminded me of that speech. In fact, changing the words to me, it sounds a little bit like this. Servanthood isn't easy. Servanthood is advanced spirituality. you got to want it bad. We've heard Jesus now say three times what he has come to do. He has come to be a servant for all, but he has come to give his life in the most servant way possible. And we've heard more than three times the disciples misunderstand him and walk away confused. He's talked about servanthood and each and every one of the readings, and then the disciples keep going to try to figure out who's the greatest. At first, they, they kind of are pretty out loud about it, and then they kind of hide it a little. They're like, oh, Jesus got mad the last time, so we'll say this quietly this time. And, and then poor James and John, I don't know what they were thinking. But Jesus talked about hard things. He talked about all sorts of hard things in these readings. He's talked about not divorcing, and yet we also know that Jesus wouldn't insist on us staying with someone in a relationship that was abusive. And he also insists that if a man is going to divorce a woman, he has to at least give her, and back in that time, he had to give her a certificate so that she could be taken care of and not be destitute the rest of her life. Jesus talked about us um, chopping off an arm or pulling out a knife, it was going to cause us to stumble, to, to stump, make a stumbling block for someone else. But we know that Jesus doesn't really want us to do that, right? Jesus has told us, the disciples, that to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to be one of these, the children. 
Jesus celebrated the children, and yet Jesus was also working to show that he came for the whole world, not just the children, not just the wealthy, not just the Jews, not just the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all who would understand what it means to put God first and to be a servant. All who understand that the commandments are not about following words just written on a parchment, but they are about living rightly with one another and serving one another. So today, once again, James and John are wondering if they can be great and sit at the right hand and the left hand of Jesus when he comes into his glory. And this time, I think Jesus kind of loses it a little bit. And I know I talk about this show all the time, The Chosen, but there is a scene of this passage in the show, The Chosen, and the actor who portrays Jesus just does a fabulous job of, of displaying um, the extreme frustration that comes from a profound sense of sadness and, and, and anger because they just keep letting him down. They just keep misunderstanding the concept of no one being greater than the other. All are beloved in God's sight. And what he is doing is for all out of the greatest of love. It's so painful for Jesus to see them and hear them quarrel about earthly power and leadership. He's trying desperately to help them understand what it means to be a servant to all. And he knows he will suffer, just like in our Isaiah text today, the suffering servant suffers for all. Jesus knows that he will suffer as a servant, but this is so we don't have to suffer. In the children's sermon today, we talked a little bit about how when one person is serving someone else and the other person is serving, Everyone's needs are met. It's kind of cool how it works out that way. That doesn't mean we don't have to share what we need. We still need to ask for help. We still need to talk about our needs. But when someone is serving me and then I'm serving them in return, we're all taken care of. It's not transactional. We serve each other out of love because we all need to be taken care of. It's kind of like this famous tale um, it's called The Parable of the Long Spoons. Many of you may have heard it before, but it's about two pictures, one of heaven and one of hell. And in hell, the people are seated around a banquet table, and it's got all this wonderful, wonderful food and drink, and their arms, though, are straight. They don't have um, the ability to bend their arms, and at the end of their arms stick out these long spoons. But because they can't bend their arms, they can't enjoy this banquet. They're all just sitting there starving. And then we come to heaven, and it's the exact same picture, except in heaven, the people are feeding each other. So here's the lesson. Servanthood is about relationship. It's about mutual, loving, faithful relationship with God and with our neighbors. As lovely as that seems, though, this in image of everybody helping each other, it's not really always that simple, is it? Because we're human, and servanthood gets complicated. I used to teach college students, and my young adults would often tell me that they didn't like to go to church because they felt judged. They felt like the people in the pews were hypocritical because they were judging them when they came in. And I said, oh, so you're not going because you're judging them. Servanthood is sticking with someone in good times and in bad times, definitely. We serve each other when, when someone is having a bad time, we serve, and when we're having a bad time, they serve us. But even though God wants us to work towards reconciliation and living in this way, God also wants us to mutually serve one another. And if that isn't happening, if a covenant is broken, if there's abuse or neglect or addiction or harm in the relationship, reconciliation may look more like letting go or loving that person from a distance. Serving someone is about giving our resources, yes, but it's also about getting to know someone. Serving is actually walking a mile with someone, maybe literally, but also figuratively. It's about 
working together to understand their life, but also for them to understand us and for us to allow the same people that we serve to serve us because we all want the opportunity to help each other. Servanthood is listening to the wisdom of elders and also giving the young a chance to change things in a way that makes sense to them. It's about the two working together and actually hearing one another, making concessions either way to find the best vision or result. Servanthood is about thinking about others, but not abusing or neglecting ourselves in the process. It's such a balance. When do I serve? When do I rest? I think about this all the time. Am I doing enough? But I know I'm enough, God. I know I'm enough. Am I doing enough? But I know I'm enough. When do we stand up for what we need, and when do we put someone else's needs in front of us? We can get too caught up in those questions. The point is we need to be thinking about them, not worrying about them, not spending our whole life ruminating on them, but just finding ways to keep exchanges mutual. Servanthood is staying connected to people you vehemently disagree with and yet finding ways to stay true to who you are in the process. Servanthood is all of us standing here Sunday with our different political views, our different church backgrounds, our different understandings of scripture, our different life experiences, coming to the table and saying, I choose to eat here with everyone else because you are just as much a beloved child of God as I am. Servanthood is advanced spirituality and faithfulness. And servanthood can only flow truly out of baptism. In Jesus' admonition of James and John today, he tells them that all of us will be brought into the baptism that he has been brought into, meaning we will all die to our old selves to be raised with Christ as servants. But for us, it's only because of Christ's baptism into death and resurrection that we can receive the same. We are baptized into Christ's death, and we are resurrected with Christ. And it's because Christ was a servant of all. And in this way, then, we can be servant to our neighbors around us, lovingly, mutually, and faithfully. Amen.